Hello there, and welcome to part four of our Hackolade tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to get our hands dirty and create a first data model. This is after you've installed the software and after you have validated the software key, obviously. To create a new data model, you can do it in different ways. Um, we're going to start by uh, clicking over here, and then immediately you will see that there's a variety of different uh, model types to choose from, depending on the target, uh, physical target, that you want to be creating a model for. Right? Uh, now, in many, many cases, you could actually uh, start creating this model by reverse engineering it um, from that particular target. Uh, but in this case, we're going to start with a blank page and just select the particular target that we want. If you don't see the plugin of your choice in this particular dialog, then you can always go over here and select the additional um, plugin for your particular target um, and install it in your local, local instance. Um, it could be that you have to restart your Hackolade Studio, but that is very quickly done and should not be a problem. So let's start here and create a model, which is a model for a JSON document. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start working in this uh, entity relationship diagram that we have over here and add a particular document. This is going to be a document that is going to be about a person, right? So here in the properties pane, I can uh, indicate the name of this particular document. Then I'm going to right click and add another attribute. For example, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, this is the first name of this particular uh, uh, person, that's the first attribute that I'm going to be adding to the document. And indeed, that is going to be a string, right? Now I'm going to also add another uh, um, property, another attribute to this document by clicking this little button over here, append field. Note that there, there are shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts that you can use as well. And this is going to be my last name um, property for this particular document. And here I'm going to add another field here, which is going to be the date of birth, the dob, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, well, hey, this is indeed a string, but the string is, from, is of a particular type. It is a date string. Right, because the date of birth is uh, our particular kind. I'm also going to add a description here. DOB stands for date of birth, right? And add that to my data model. Once I have that, I can add a couple more uh, properties here if I wanted to. Uh, so for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another property that is the height of a particular person, right? And that is an integer indeed, right? I can add a lot of different um, uh, constraints, uh, more descriptive properties. I can add uh, enumerations, min max values, all of these different things. And I can also change the uh, order of these particular uh, um, uh, properties uh, very, very easily by working with the, um, the capabilities of the ER diagram. Note that I also can go to the options pane here of my uh, particular um, entity that I've added, my particular document that I've added, and for example, change the color of the particular uh, document that I'm working with really, really easily. In addition to the ERD view of this particular document that you have here, you can also look at the schema view, the hierarchical schema view of this document. This is really interesting because if you double click here, or if you would, for example, right click here and, um, and open it, yeah, um, in a new tab, right? Or if you would go back and, uh, for example, um, push the uh, little icon here in the title, then you see this hierarchical schema view of the document, which is super interesting when you're dealing with um, uh, nested structures. Not really the case in this particular document right now, but could be really interesting uh, should you have these nested structures in your models. In this um, particular um, hierarchical schema tab, you also find a number of tabs at the bottom here, which will allow you to do specific things for the document that you're looking at. One of the more interesting um, tabs that you find at the bottom is what we call the JSON preview tab. Right? The JSON preview tab uh, gives you two side-by-side -side, uh, panes. One of them is for the JSON schema of the particular entity, and the other one is for a sample document, a sample document of the structure that you are modeling right now. There's a lot of different options that you can uh, choose here. You can look at uh, different uh, capabilities here, um, but obviously all of these have particular uses that will be more or less useful in your specific environment. 
Once you are happy with the model, you should obviously save it by clicking the little button over there or by uh, doing a Control S or Command S, depending on the platform, and give the particular document model a name and a particular location, uh, tutorial, right? And then say, well, this is part four, not JSON, save it, and uh, now you are good to go. Uh, there's also quite a few options that you can take a look at, right? So um, in the um, options menu of Hackolade, you will find that there are, for example, uh, name f naming formats that you can choose, uh, but there's also other options that would be useful, like, uh, for example, the default paths that you might want to set, um, especially if you're integrating with things like GitHub. Um, also, one thing that might be important is that you have the possibility to have multiple um, Hackolade documents open at the same time. Should you want that, then you would actually want to create a new application instance, right? So let's leave this particular uh, do document model uh, open, the JSON document model open, and then start a new application instance, which will allow me to work on another model at the same time as finishing the original model that I was working on. There's also a number of other tips and tricks. Uh, we will link to that um, uh, from the tutorial page, obviously. Um, but for now, that concludes our part four, and I welcome you to follow along in the next chapter of the tutorial. Thank you, and see you soon.